One thing that doesn't change here in Cannes is the obsession with stardom, causing a stir even among the ultra-sophisticates of the French film world. We started writing with Eftemis, like, because uh, we work closely together and, you know, whenever one has an idea, goes to the other and goes like, oh, I'm thinking about this thing and what do you think? And we start constructing a, a story. And this time, I think when, after we started uh, the first story, uh, we, you know, we told each other, should we try and make a different structure uh, of a film? And... Uh, we thought about like why what about making an anthology and actually in the beginning uh, you were supposed to follow the three stories in parallel mm -hmm. uh, but then I had the I this idea of the same actors playing uh, different characters in the different stories so that would have been you know very confusing um, and we decided to see how it would work if we separated the stories and you saw one after the other and actually they became even stronger uh, so we, we went with that, and then we started writing the other stories, and, and uh, yeah, we're here. We, we started, I mean, practically as well, the actors had to change slightly from one uh, for, for the different parts, so we, yeah, we finished each story uh, individually. Um, actually, on this one, I didn't do a lot of thinking, <laughs> to be completely honest. I just showed up every day and tried to say yes, and... Uh, work off of what everybody else was doing and, and try to just d play with what was in front of me. Every movie is different and what you need to do, how you get it fold into the world is always different and this was so different. Mm -hmm. But I was happy to see Emma and, and Yorgos, it was a nice reunion for that in that respect but it was also very different, a contemporary thing, um, three different roles, uh, the, the preparation is very, uh, it was very different. I don't think I've ever done so many fittings. And it wasn't so much about the, the cut or anything or the fabrics, it was more about stuff that was pulled just to kind of help to figure out who this character might be. Mm -hmm. And so the customer and I would play with him and then we'd shoot pictures to him and he'd say, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and we'd keep on working. And uh, it was it was an excellent preparation and that was a very important part to distinguish each character for me. It's like three short stories, basically. So there's, just by its nature, there's not as much information for the characters or their backstory. Apart from the fact that I like that anyway, like to like throw people into a world, into a certain situation, and try and figure figure that out, it it enge I find it more engaging. Uh, but you know, especially this one, you know, there was you know a very short amount of time to figure everything out and you know follow the story and the character. So I think you know we did a lot of work in their writing, so there was a very specific structure, and I think we had to trust that. Uh, and you know, be true every day to what we're doing, and very instinctive, and see what feels right, or sometimes get uh, variations and slightly different things. So then we could play, you know, during the edit of you know where the the exact tone landed. So I think it was just about that, just you know, being there, you know, getting the stuff that we felt were right, uh, and then you know, create this world, these three different worlds, I guess. <laughs> not to think too much. And I, I didn't want to be analytical about it. I, after the first time I read the script, I thought, oh, maybe I should read it again and try to see what the themes were that were connecting all of mm -hmm. the different stories. And then I thought, well, what's the point of that? <laughs> because because you're going to get something different each time you watch the film, and then just the um, doing uh, different takes, you get something different. And so it's just running with whatever you just felt or, or whatever impulse you're feeling in, in that particular moment or that run of the scene. And um, I think when you get a little too brainy about it, it just dies. And that's what we're striving to do, like allow different people to experience it in their own way. I think that's the most fulfilling way of watching something or experiencing something that it allows you to see different things or as Hong says, like if you see it another time, you, you see different things and you notice different things. 
because uh, there's so much, there's so much information, there's so much, that there's lack of information that you have to fill in, and that's, I think that's what make, makes it enjoyable, or to some people, you know, not enjoyable, right, right, frustrating, right. but, you know. Well, it's true, really if, you, if you don't recognize things immediately, and you have to work a little to um, figure out what your relationship or what you're saying, I think, once you get engaged in that process, you own it in a different way, and it's more powerful. It gets you engaged. You're not just hopping on a bus and, you know, kind of empathetically having emotions and things, but not really thinking. Um, you know, the beautiful thing is there's recognizable aspects of it, but it's a little skewed, like in the, in the cult section, you know. You have a different relationship immediately in a very simple, not pushy way to sexuality. Everybody's kissing each other. Everybody's like, hey, well, it's tonight your night, you know. <laughs> it, okay, we understand that, but for me, it makes you question, you know, social conditioning and certain things that we just take as a given. And it's not, it's not, um, it's not like, Perverse. It's just playing with uh, uh, transposing things. Mm. It's like in the first one, it's the, the sentimental uh, relationship between these men, but it's also a power business relationship. That mix is really um, potent and makes you think of all kinds of other relationships and kind of opens a Pandora's box of your imagination. And poor things, I was just there for a couple of days, so I was really just kind of like a fly on the wall, observing everything and trying to make sure that, like, I was in the movie they were making in this in the way that and that made sense, having no real like knowledge of what was happening. And then I feel kind of the same on this. <laughs> um. <laughs> For me, I mean, I wasn't as involved as you were, hey. but for me, it was um, it, it was just like the most, uh, yeah, man, I keep on describing this movie as a fever dream, and that was kind of the experience of making it for me as well, because I was like, man, I don't know what's going on, like, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, man, actually, what, what? Um, so, I, I don't know, but it was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of honesty, I felt like, between the people that we were working with, and it was just felt very open in a way that was like, um, that was very, um, how would you say, like, I don't know. For me, I feel like um, uh, it, I don't know. Like I, I look to. It's going to be a lot of this. It's going to be a lot of this. Like the uh, you look at someone like like Willem, for example, oh, who I really admire the way that he does. It. I think you know everyone's just trying to figure out a, a a way that works for them. But for Willem, it, he he's like a little. Um, like circus person almost in a way in the sense that like <laughs> I mean that in the best way ever I adore yeah. him he's the most talented um but he like he it's he's just like a part of this thing from the beginning to the end so mm -hmm. he kind of shows up uh if he's going to be in a scene that day he'll be there probably all day just watching everything else in his costume he's already done his ashtanga practice for 60 minutes in the morning he's just like prepared and ready and I think um, that's uh, like uh, you know and then you have Emily who's got her she and Yorgos have this you know really intense relationship and shorthand and um, very much feels like they're making these movies together and I, I don't know everyone kind of fits into the puzzle in a different way and you're just trying to find your footing and see how you can fit in. Mm. This is my experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got an email one day from Yorgos and he just said, I have this small role in this movie we've been making. We're almost done with it. If you want to come play in New Orleans for a day, please do. And I was like, yes, fuck yes, please. Yeah. And, um, and so I rolled up just with my singular scene um, and kind of jumped, jumped, just jumped in. In terms of how he incorporates nudity or sexuality or sex on screen, do you just go in going, I trust you implicitly anyway with whatever you choose? I mean, he's aesthetically like, just, you're so covered. He's yeah. a true aesthetic genius. Um, and so at least from that perspective, that's nice. Um, 
But I don't know. I guess just like for me, it's a bit of like a wow, well, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I've already brought shame upon my family. Like, <laughs> me too. This is better than a lot of <laughs> shameful things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my intro to acting was like, you know, doing or simulating butt sex with the 45 year old on a TV show. So, like, all I had to do was uh, show my tits in this one, so it was fine. <laughs> <laughs>